Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about the new engine mounts for the Detroit diesel and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. So what I'm doing is I'm converting from the original engine mounts that were cast bits of chock fast orange. So you make a form work, you get it in the right position, you then pour the epoxy in, it sets, and then if you need to, you shim it slightly. So that's how it was done originally. What I'm moving to are these engine mounts from Polyflex. So we've got two elongated holes that give us a little bit of, you know, positioning, not fore and aft, but a little bit this way. And we've got a single stud on it, which is 18 millimeters in diameter, so pretty chunky. The idea with these is you take your top two nuts off, then you slide it through your bracket. I'm gonna to have to expand the hole in the bracket because this is 18 mil. This was previously, I think, 16 or even less. Then you can adjust this nut to move the corner up and down to get your drive shaft alignment, then put the two locking nuts on the top and you're in business. The advantages to this is obviously you can adjust it, which was my primary concern. And also here, it's got this, I'm not sure what it is, but you know, let's call it rubberized mounting in here to absorb a bit of vibration. Not like it flops around, you know, it's pretty strong. It's designed to take an engine with quite a lot of horsepower. This is actually slightly over spec for my engine, but that's where we're gonna go. Now, the reason I didn't initially wanna go these, is you can see that the base alone takes up all the clearance I had, so I didn't really have the room. You can see at an absolute minimum, even at its lowest setting, it's still taller than the original mounts like that. So, in order to get around that, I am going to chop 40 millimeters off every engine bracket. They're not always as straightforward as this one. This is the one I'm starting with, but you know, we'll see how we go. There are two main ways to achieve this. One is to drill a second set of holes further down so I can just lift the whole bracket up. The other is to cut 40 millimeters off the bottom and weld it back on. In this case, because of where these holes are and how close to the edge we would get, and the fact that this gap here is exactly 40 millimeters, I'm gonna cut the steel here, weld a new base on, done. I'm gonna use a new piece of steel, same thickness, about 10 millimeters thick, saves me cutting the old base off as well, but we then have to drill a good 18, 20 millimeter hole in here, so that'll be a bit of a challenge, but you know, it's doable. So what I'm gonna do is clean the paint off here, clean an earth point and try and get this cut off with the plasma cutter. Can't quite get the head of the plasma cutter in here. So I think I'm gonna cut round, we'll get this out of the way, then we'll gouge a bit more out. Now I need to grind all of this to quite a good bevel because I need a really, really strong weld on here. No just superficial tack stuff, you know, this has got to be strong. So I'm going to grind all of this back to a good bevel and then we're going to weld it to a new base. See, this is what happens when you get distracted and leave the lid off the seed bucket. Tell your story walking, buddy. Here comes Pegleg. Come on, Daffy, you're doing well. She's hardly sprinting along these days. Come on, have some seed. But at least you're walking again with a limp. There you go. Limp's better than not walking. While we're here, because I get distracted by the chickens all the time. Dotty, the other one's gone broody. How many, Dotty? You're not getting up in the mornings. No, come on, she's been sitting here for weeks. Every morning I get her up. And you started going broody and sitting on other people's eggs, haven't you? No, no, no eggs. All right, come on. It's not food for you to go. All right, where were we? Now, I'm gonna start grinding all this dodgy plasma cutting off, give ourselves a bit of a bevel to weld to. Okay, just having a look how flat our surfaces are now. 
We've got a dip on that left hand side, but I'm going to deal with that in the welding. I'm not going to bring everything down to match it. So here's the deal with this engine mount. Cut a 40 mil off. The bolt head used to come through here and there was room. Now there's not, the bolt will just hit here. So I'm gonna plasma cut this flange on and then offset it and bring it out to here. I can't have it on this side, I don't think. I'm gonna test fit it today, but there's a part of an oil cooler that kind of sits in here. So I can't have a flange both sides of the bolt, which is kind of what I was hoping to do originally. But we'll cut this off, reattach it over here and drill the hole in the base plate here for the stud before we weld it on. I don't know if I ever showed you, but the handle fell out of my drill press chuck. So I just uh, tack welded a old valve in. Now I can stand it up too. Pretty cool, hey? So gone for a pretty tight fit around here. So none of the wiggle room is gonna come from here because I want the nut to take as much of the load. I figure if you've got an oversized hole, not enough of the weight's gonna be sitting on that nut. All right, I've got it propped up on this steel here, but it looks like it needs to come up just a tiny bit more to be plumb. Actually now maybe just need something super thin under the back here. See. All right, just a thin hacksaw blade under the other end. It's got us there. All right, let's start welding. All right, this is now four passes. Turned it down 10 amps, could possibly even go down a little bit more. It's not undercutting though, so maybe it's all right. So I did two down the center to fill the bevel, and then this is one to the left followed by one to the right. I'm tempted now just to get a big honking big 6013 and just do a cap over the top. That'll be five passes. I think it's gonna be enough. Rather than modifying this engine mount, which was very badly painted without any surface prep, uh, I'm actually gonna just make a new one. To do that, just using a bit of old angle line I had lying around. It's pretty much the right dimensions, so we'll just plasma cut it to the right width now. The old hole for the mount was slotted. I've just done the single hole here because it goes up on the, you know, the, the adjuster nut of the, the new mount, the Polyflex mount. But we're going to be positioning this as accurately as we can before I actually drill the rails to put the Polyflex mounts in. Here, this bit of plate is just right for my gussets here without using this center hole. So I can get them both out of this bit of plate. All right, there we go. Cut along these two lines and that'll give us our two gussets. All right, I'm gonna give this right angle a bit of a clean up before the flanges go in, because obviously it's gonna be much harder to get a brush or anything in there once that's done. Then we'll grind our bevels on these, weld it out. So, just out of interest, uh, this one was 140 amps, but dragging the rod uphill with the sort of wedge shape on the bench. This one I put it in the vise and kept it flat and did 130 amps. So this actually looks colder because it's more heaped, but I think it's just because it was running downhill with it on the slope. So I think this is the better way to go. Obviously it's not perfect, you can see porosity and stuff in it, but I think it's going to have plenty of strength for uh, for the job. Anyway, we'll do the same thing on the other side. Oh, and another thing that's quite obvious to welders, but something I'm sort of getting my head around now, it's helping a lot, is just grinding away your tacks or your root passes before you do your caps. You know, obviously this one's a bit dodgy, but um, you know, it's now going to get a full pass over the top. It's like there's a bit of a stigma about welding and then grinding, you know, the classic, you know, 
grinder and paint meat with a welder I ain't. So I was kind of a bit shy of the grinder, but the grinder is a really important tool for a welder, uh, particularly grinding the first pass before you put the second one on. No need to grind your final pass, but certainly helps just getting those tacks down and getting a smooth bead right over the top. I certainly have no worries about this being strong enough given this is welded all the way front and back. This is actually one of the original mounts I'm replacing. Hmm, it's a nice jaunty angle there too. I need to check whether that's actually correct. I can't see how it would be. I think I'll make mine square. Um, but it's got a little bit of a booger weld here, a little bit here, and absolutely nothing on the back side. And that's lasted 30 years. So that gives me confidence. Now, this engine mount's a slightly funny one in that this flange, so it comes down off the block, then actually goes in under the gearbox. So there's no way I can make it this way and lift it up 40 mil. I just hit the gearbox. So the plan is to come down here and then out to the right. I believe that was actually Adrian's suggestion. He's always got lots of good ideas, bless him. Uh, and then it means just welding some sort of flange onto the rails the engine mounts to, which is no big deal at all. This next one doesn't have to come out anywhere near as far, so just uh, clamped a bit of angle iron on here with the speed square, and then we'll just run the plasma cutter across it. Okay, there we go. Um, I think I'm sort of getting a bit better at the plasma cutting in, and I think we've got this set, yeah, kind of 42 amps or something around there, because this is quite thick. And also, you can see sparks coming out the bottom side, and when they stop, you're obviously not all the way through. So I sort of hold in position till I see the sparks coming again, then move on. The other thing I've started doing is not letting go of the trigger when I get to the end of the job, get past it and let the pilot arc go for a little bit. I'm gonna see if that stops the tip blocking up. What I'm finding is I can do a really long cut, but as soon as I try and do another cut, it won't fire up. And maybe it's to do with turning the arc off while I'm still on the piece and getting some contamination. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it's much better than I was doing previously. Slowly but surely. I guess in some ways it's like, I know this probably sounds really obvious as well, like I'm just learning a lot doing all this stuff. And um, there's a point in welding where you start looking for the puddle to start with and then at the puddle down the track. And suddenly welding becomes a really conscious action instead of following like an action you've been taught, you're actually reacting to what you're seeing. And I guess that's what I'm learning with plasma cutting too. You know, I know it sounds obvious, but I'm a bit slow. Now, we're about to do some drilling, but what we have here is another little Prezi. This is from Dan in the US, so thank you, Dan. And what it is, is some drill drill bits and taps in one unit. Let's see here. So it sort of drills and then cuts the thread. Which is very cool. Very good. Thank you, Dan. So we'll experiment with those down the track, absolutely. But because we're doing some drilling right now, what we also have is some Boeing developed lubricant which apparently is the bee's knees. So, what's the difference between the two? Let me look it up, let me read. So, what does the website say? I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Bow, Boeing, Bow Lube. Pace are highly efficient MQL lubricants. Designed for the standards required by the aerospace and similar technology industries. Well, that's me. Uh, Non-hazardous, environmentally safer, worker friendly. So there's soft, medium, and hard. Not quite sure what hard means in the term of lubricants. Could simply be the consistency of the paste. I don't know. Yes. So I presume they have similar qualities as lubricant, but the hard is quite clearly physically harder than the medium. So. Ah. Somebody asked me what's with the uh, Virgil big goggle things. And these are 1.5 magnification. And it's kind of cool because I need to wear glasses anyway. I'm finding that by having these in the workshop, it's forcing me to wear safety glasses more because I put them on purely so I can see. And then 
I also have safety glasses on because I'm pretty slack with that sort of thing, as you all know, and occasionally comment. So that's the story with these. They're actually magnifiers and they're gold. I wear them for welding, basically wear them for everything in the workshop now, and incidentally, end up protecting my eyes. So, and really cheap too, like 15 bucks at Hardware in general. I don't know what brand they were. Oh, here we go, Workforce. I should try and find them and I'll put them on the Amazon store. Ah, which reminds me as well, something I've been meaning to mention. I've got an Amazon store where I put some stuff that I actually do use so you can find it. And yes, if you buy it from there, the price is no higher for you, but I do get a cut from it. But what's also interesting is if you visit the store and then go anywhere else and buy anything else within 24 hours, um, I still get a cut of that because um, it saves a cookie. And this is something that uh, Scott from Bus Grease Monkey told me. He said, look, you know, if someone goes to your site, then goes off and buys a fridge like 20 minutes later, you actually get a cut of it because you brought that person to Amazon. So if you want to buy something from Amazon, even if it's not something I sell, if you go to my store first, I get a cut. Here's a tip. Interesting, this metal is very slightly warm still from plasma cutting it. It's melting the lube pretty quickly, which is interesting. Okay, let's give it a go, see what happens. Oh, by the way, yes, you know, you can do pilot holes, go small, bigger, 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 whatever. Particularly if the positioning is critical. I actually find that sometimes it grabs more. I'm finding this large drill bit's working best just to drill from scratch, if you're wondering. All right, that went pretty well. I'm impressed. I don't know much about this stuff yet, but the impression I'm getting is you've kind of got the slipperiness of an oil, but the adhesion of a grease sort of thing. So it's a nice combination of these types of jobs. I think it's definitely, the, the drill bit didn't seem to work as hard doing it. So, and those drill bits are really expensive. So I think this is gonna help save, um, you know, the expense of burning through these drill bits too fast. Uh-oh. Strange noises coming from the pulley. That's not good. Ugh. Oh dear. Fair bit of pulley rubber in there. Dodgy belt holtz play. This is why jobs take so long. You know, you're doing it, belt dies. Wait for the shops to open, public holidays. This is all the kind of stuff that I didn't really factor into the schedule. I mean, I know there's lots of things I didn't, but it's amazing how often this sort of things happen. You know, still waiting for a new float for the engine, so we've got no power on the boat anymore. Belts died. Gotta say, I reckon 15% of your time maybe is tool maintenance. All right, here's the finished product with a bit of primer on it. I'm actually gonna paint these black so they contrast a little bit to the engine block itself in the Alpine green. Uh, I'm gonna install all these and have the adjustable engine mounts in, they're actually in the workshop at the moment, have them all in and mounted before the, you know, the crane truck comes to get them so that we can just drop it straight onto the rails. Well, thanks for watching. I've now put that engine mount onto the engine so that I can support it from three points and take the final engine mount off and bring it home and start working on that. Before I can do that, I have to go buy a new belt. I've actually been to four stores now and haven't found the right size belt. So I've got Auto One in Hornsby just to order one for me. It's arrived, it's New Year's Eve today, so I'm gonna duck in there and pick that up so I can finish this one today. After that, I have a Jabsco pump to rebuild. Um, I've already put a new shaft in, put the oil seal in, uh, put the grease around it. I filmed that, so I'll do a video on this separately. Then I just gotta put it back together which would be a nice, fun, easy job if I had actually ever done a jabs get pump before, but how hard can it be? This bit has been floating around with the bits from the jabs get pump, but I have no memory of where that came from. Maybe it just ended up near it and somehow I've decided it's part of the pump when actually it isn't, just to make things even more confusing. Anyway, the usual chaos continues. All right, we'll have a great night tonight and I will catch you next year. See ya, bye.
Thank you.